1952 was a significant year in country music history. Roy Acuff made a television appearance on The Kate Smith Show. The Eddie Arnold Show premiered on CBS TV. And on September 23rd, Hank Williams' final recording session took place at Castle Studios in Nashville. Your Keaton Hart, Collagia, and Take These Chains From My Heart came out of that session. Williams, a Grand Ole Opry member and an Acuff Rose writer, was a frequent visitor to the WSM radio studios in the National Life Building. He may or may not have noticed a young woman who greeted and directed visitors at the WSM reception desk and was assigned to answer his fan mail delivered to the station, but she too was destined to be a major influence on the music America loves best. The nameplate on the 18-year-old WSM desk read Frances Williams. She's now known in international music circles as Frances Preston. By 1958, New York and Los Angeles music industry executives had begun to look on Nashville as a sleeping giant. The Everly Brothers, Marty Robbins, Sonny James, and Ferlin Husky were climbing the pop charts, and a former truck driver named Elvis Presley had blended his country, gospel, and blues roots to create a highly marketable amalgam called rock and roll. When BMI executive Bob Burton decided his organization needed to establish a permanent southern regional presence, he turned to a personable youngster with strong music row ties to head BMI's new division. The BMI Nashville office opened in 1958 with a two-person staff, Francis Preston and one assistant, housed in Preston's parents' garage. Preston was very aware that the American Southland was a hotbed of musical creativity, she grew up listening to local variations on country, gospel, blues, jazz, and soul, as well as the occasional grand opera from New York's Metropolitan Opera House, and realized her affiliation with BMI presented her with the opportunity to help homegrown songwriters and publishers reach out to a greater audience and earn an equitable return on their talents. Frances Preston's empathy with the creative spirit, combined with her formidable executive skills, have made her a powerful force in the music industry's aesthetic and financial communities. She was named a BMI Vice President in 1964, Senior Vice President of Performing Rights in 1985, and President and CEO in 1986. During her tenure as head of BMI, Preston has continued the company's tradition of leadership in performing rights, refocusing, and expanding domestic licensing efforts to include many new categories of music customers. Preston's music industry peers acknowledged her accomplishments during the 40th Annual Grammy Awards, when she was presented the prestigious Trustee Award. With a love of music and a legendary business savvy, BMI's president and CEO, Francis Preston, has forged a career of unparalleled accomplishment and respect. My job was to bring recognition and honor to the creators of music. And that's when I coined the phrase, it all begins with a song. As a reigning queen of music, Francis has continued BMI's tradition of leadership in performing rights, representing the causes of composers and songwriters, while also opening new genres of music to public awareness. In January 1999, Preston was honored as Person of the Year at the annual Needham Convention in Cannes, France, the highest international award accorded to music industry executives. The recognition was well-deserved. In recent years, Preston has directed a great deal of time and energy boosting BMI's international profile. Through her personal efforts and the company's affiliations with sister performing rights agencies around the world, BMI is in the forefront of establishing important international partnerships. Preston serves as chair or co-chair on a number of multinational performing rights committees to ensure the rights of American creators are promoted in the world arena. Over the past few years, evolving digital technologies have changed the way music is delivered to consumers. And from the first shot of the digital revolution, Preston has kept BMI on the technological cutting edge. These scenes were shot at a recent Nashville seminar jointly conducted by BMI and the Country Music Association. During her keynote speech, Preston addressed BMI's role in guaranteeing compensation to writers whose work is distributed through internet streaming, MP3 technology, and delivery systems such as Napster. I was very excited last week when I received a telephone call from Napster asking us for a license. 
And that was a real plus. And uh, that was um, something that we are actively pursuing, as you can imagine. Clearly one of the nation's busiest executives, Preston has nevertheless invested considerable time and energy into several charities. She's president of the T.J. Martell Foundation for Leukemia, Cancer, and AIDS Research, and the recipient of its 1992 Humanitarian Award. Her involvement has led to the creation of the Francis Williams Preston Research Laboratories at the Vanderbilt Ingram Medical Center, a cancer research lab named in her honor. As of February 2000, Vanderbilt's Medical Research Building II also bore her name. In October 2000, Preston was presented the City of Hope Hospital Spirit of Life Award for her fundraising activities on behalf of the Los Angeles Hospital and Research Facility. Although Preston is based in New York, BMI's largest facility, employing around 400 staffers, is located off Nashville's Music Row. It's tangible evidence that Frances Preston takes great pride in her Nashville heritage and remains one of country music's most enthusiastic supporters. Music Row has always held Preston in high regard and has showered her with several honors over the years. In 1987, the Country Music Association presented her with the Irving Waugh Award. Tonight at long last, country music gets a chance to do something for her. It's a very great honor for me to present the Irving Waugh Award of Excellence to Frances Preston. In 1992, CMA conferred legend status on Preston when she was named to the prestigious Country Music Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Country Music Hall of Fame, the President and Chief Operating Officer of Broadcast Music Incorporated, Francis Preston. An individual who values her roots and the early lessons she learned from country music's revered institutions, Frances Preston was one of the platform guests when the Grand Ole Opry celebrated its 75th birthday last year. American journalists have, for years, been fascinated with Preston's leadership skills and eye for talent, and have often placed her in the spotlight. She was singled out by Esquire magazine as the most influential and powerful person in the country music business also profiled by Fortune in the article, The Year's Most Fascinating Business People. A savvy magazine feature described the Preston magic as coming as much from her empathy as her business power. She has a gift, the ability to make everyone she touches feel special, golden. Ladies Home Journal listed her as one of the 50 most powerful women in America, and Entertainment Weekly placed her second in its top 10 listing of The Powers of Country Music. She was most recently named as one of the most influential women in the entire entertainment industry by the national trade publication Daily Variety. Junior Achievement of Middle Tennessee would like to add another memento to Frances Preston's well-stocked trophy case, a work of art proclaiming her our 2001 Free Enterprise Award recipient. 